You'll turn with me to Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Now you do realize that we're almost done with this second go-round in Philippians that I didn't finish some time back. And we're still in uh, the second chapter, the first like five verses. We have not moved from day one that we started this. We're still in those same verses. However, <clears throat> There is a chance, since I'm in the conference and all this other time I missed and only had to, could do one class or no classes, there is a chance I won't even finish what these verses are talking about. So, say la vie. Say it again. All right, Philippians 2, um, verse 6. Who being, speaking of Jesus, who being in the form of God, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm going to read what my margin says the true translation is, uh, thought it not a thing to be grasped after, to be equal with God. <clears throat> and here's, here's the contrast of that. Thought it not, this is Jesus as God, thought it not something that you should grasp after to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. That's the contrast. I mean, if you really think about that, that's I mean, it's one thing to not think it thing to be equal with God. You know, well, okay, uh, <clears throat> I'm just a nice guy, so I, w I don't think it's robbery, you know, to not be equal with God. Okay, so that's my general tenor. It's another thing to not think that, and therefore your action is to, but you make yourself of no reputation. You, you, you see what, I mean, that's a big leap. That is not a small leap. And, uh, <clears throat> um, and of course, you notice there that it's, uh, just the wording there in the King James made himself of no reputation. If you just take that at face value, you realize that that's not God making him of no reputation. And here's why I say that. <clears throat> um, you know, we can think that we're spiritual and, uh, you know, we get into a circumstance where the circumstances turn against us and all of a sudden because of the way things have turned and people's reaction and the devil and everything else, we all of a sudden are of no reputation. That's not you making yourself of no <laughs> reputation, you know. I'm just trying to be clear here, you know. Uh, you know, and so we go, and then we embrace this. We say, oh, well, I've just, you know, I'm just made of no reputation. You know, well, it's, it ain't that. It's not Jesus. It's not the mind of Christ that got you there. It is probably your, sorry, your ignorance or other people's lack of Christ. But that's not you having his mind and going, you know what? <clears throat> I mean, some people are in the form of director of the Bible school or some position, you know, and, and they get taken out of that position and it's like, ah, you know, the big freak out and whatever when, you know, uh, there's even a place for us to say, hey, you know, even before something happens, if there's somebody better or if God wants to do, you know, something in this situation, I'm willing to step down, you know. I mean, I've actually done that as pastor before. Mike may remember. <clears throat> and, you know, just said, okay, well, if I'm not the chosen one that God chose to be pastor here, then I'll, since you're wanting that position, I'll give it to you. And six months later, they went out screaming, pulling their hair and going, I'll, I'm not a pastor. I was never meant to be a pastor. I'm sorry. Take, take it, take it. You know, and the funny thing is they're going, they were grabbing it before, and now they're going, take it, take it. And I'm going, well, I don't know if I, no! <laughs> I'm a bad person. <clears throat> All right. 
So uh, this this particular well, let me let me finish reading a little more here, okay? But no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so what we've been actually studying, we've had a long break here, but what we were studying before this was, and maybe you might remember this, is resurrection the point. That's the title of what we were dealing with before, is resurrection the point. <clears throat> and so um, we, you know, we were getting into and delving into that, and I almost finished it, but I had one small section left that I wanted to deal with before we move in, into another area. <clears throat> and um, uh, the subtitle of this is called, What is Behind Exalting Resurrection? Okay. <clears throat> So, again, trying to read a little bit. You know that conference, that blew my mind. I, I really thought for sure I had just the right amount and I couldn't believe how much I was not able to share. I just need to read, okay? <laughs> and I prayed, Lord, just, just let me read so we can get past this. You said your words are spirit and life. Let mine that I just read, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, the approach of many ministers is to paint the resurrected Christ in robes of victory and glory, which is quite common. Amen? All right. <clears throat> the cross can gain a fair following among Jews and Gentiles if it is presented as a stepping stone to greatness. The resurrection, you'll want this. Oh, sure, a little cross stuff here, but the, you'll really like this resurrection stuff. It'll be worth it, you know. Really, is that really the, the picture that God wants us to have of, of this thing? And, and yet it's so common that it's almost foolishness to, to present anything else as the important thing unless... We, unless you, unless you, not just me or if I have seen something here, it doesn't matter. You see that from the Lord because if you hear it and you say, oh, well, I can believe that because he gave quite a few scriptures that, that pointed that out. But when you get into the situation and you get away from everything for a while and you get into a situation where it's a life situation, you'll find yourself grasping after the resurrection instead of Christ crucified as the answer to all things, <clears throat> including the resurrection. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so, uh, if presented as a stepping stone to greatness, but it is not a stepping stone. The cross is not a stepping stone, folks. The cross is the foundation. Okay, and that you, you have to see that, and, and I know many of you have seen that. I'm, my laboring at times is, is not it ever, it would never be meant to be seen as me doubting what you've seen, but that we keep our hearts pressing in to see more. If we've seen this, we, we must see it in more fullness. Um, and so, because remember, all this stuff here in Philippians is talking about, okay, here's what your mind is supposed to be like. Let this mind be in you. You, you see what I'm saying? So, if we, if we believe the doctrine of it, woohoo, you know, I mean, the Father wants reality. I mean, can you see the Father going, woohoo, <laughs> you know, you know, you, you believe truths, but Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I'm the life of it. It's not just a way. It is a way that must become the truth, the truth, not truths. 
and the truth must eventually come out of us as life. So, <clears throat> so, so that's my, my laboring, that's my desire, and that desire is, um, is not just spawning because of some lack I might perceive in someone else, but because that's a, that is the desire of my heart, is to never, never let go of Jesus, to never think that in some way I have attained to him who is the length and the breadth and the, the beginning and the end, the, the fullness and the, you know, all of that. It's ridiculous to think that some dummy guy in Denton, Texas, would know all truth. I don't, I don't even hardly know anything. But I want to know, and I don't keep looking at how much I know or how much I don't know. Neither one moves me, how much I know or how much I don't. Neither one moves me. Jesus moves me. I want Jesus. And I don't, I can't, I don't have time to, you know, get a little calculator and go, well, well, I'm doing pretty good. Or, oh, my God, you know. My calculator just, you know, synced with somebody else in the room, and they know more than me, you know. Know more than me. Let's just know Jesus. And if you're knowing Jesus and I'm knowing Jesus, we're all in the same place. We're all in the right place. We're not comparing ourselves with one another. All right. So. The found, that foundation is realized in the hidden wisdom of God, which rejects any other mindset. <clears throat> and we dealt with that in the 1 Corinthians class that I taught some time back. Never finished that one either. <laughs> Have I, Mike, you've been around longer than most. Have I ever finished, in, uh, uh, never, in the history of, yeah. That's like Deb, Deb told me once, she said, I can't. I came up with a with a, a cure for Alzheimer's, but I forgot what it is. <laughs> oh, oh darn! All right, but <clears throat> what we're saying uh, and what we said in, in Corinthians is that the hidden wisdom of God, as described by Paul, there <clears throat> is the cross. It's it's the cross, and it's the cross way. And Paul had adopted that. And he says, you know, I'm with you in fear and in trembling. And much, you know, we think, well, you know, maybe he's afraid they'll beat him up. No, it is weakness because he just described in the first chapter that that weakness, uh, that, that the cross is God's power and strength. But it is the power of weakness and the power of of. Weakness. <laughs> There's an, there was another word, but slipping away slowly. <clears throat> Soon you'll look up here and there'll just be one big belt buckle on the thing up here. <clears throat> Where'd Randy go? <laughs> Sorry. Let us continue. <clears throat> All right. We, <clears throat> we exalt resurrection without recognizing how Jesus related to it, how he related to the resurrection. <clears throat> by calling him lamb on the throne, by calling him lamb on the throne, Christ is still meant to be known, even in resurrection, as the crucified. Lamb on the throne. Not just lamb on the throne, is it? It's not. It's slain lamb. Sacrifice lamb. Slaughtered is even the best word there. You know, so here he's print, presenting himself before all nations and all people and everything. Here I am, you know, and, there, and everyone's going, there he is, you know, slaughtered lamb on the throne. Well, that's who he really is. It's that nature. It's not, it's not just, you know, well, well, we'll deal with other things that you might consider in this. So Christ is still meant to be known even in resurrection as the crucified. In this way, the crucified brings or ornamentation to resurrection. Now, I know that was a weird phrase that I, that I wrote, but I liked it because maybe there's one more. The throne may be glorious, but the lamb sits upon it. 
what is is it not the lamb that is actually making it glorious not just to throw oh, that no that's a cool throne you know I mean, what's the next thought can i have it you know as long as he's on there we know what it is god exalted yeah <clears throat> and isn't that over and over in the book of revelation glory and honor and power and wisdom and might be to the lamb the slain lamb the slaughtered lamb the the, the little lamb uh, <clears throat> all right so speaking of that but it's not going to be that same verse look in revelation real quick chapter one though revelation chapter one Revelation 1 and verse, uh, do people on Skype have Bibles? Just check it. You need to get your swords out. All right. Revelation 1 verse 18, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So, <clears throat> I'll just read this. In the book of Revelation, it is the crucified one who lives, meaning that this crucified Jesus yet lives. I was dead, but now I yet live. And you say, well, aren't you supposed to still be dead? No, it's not the death of the cross. It's the self-giving nature that brought forth the crucifixion or the the cross in terms of two pieces of wood. There, in other words, there would never be t God on two pieces of wood. Well, I mean, it, come on. Let's just even think about that ridiculous statement. God hung on two pieces of wood. God crucified. God crucified. I mean, that, that ought to blow your mind unless you realize his nature, unless you realize the him, meaning the being, the him of that crucifixion, then all you see is an unfair, unjust thing where an innocent man or innocent, you know, son of God. But that was the plan before, in advance. The cross wasn't an out of control mob. Jesus, you know, Jesus talked about it way before the event, told his disciples, this is what's going to happen, you know. And when that happened, they went, why is this happening? He told them. Many times it said, he'll, he'll talk about the cross and stuff, and they, and they understood not the words that he spoke. Well, that's still going on today, people. <laughs> He's still talking about the cross, and a whole lot of people ain't getting it. Praise God, you know. The Spirit of God is here to teach us Christ crucified. All right. So <clears throat> read that little part again. It is the crucified who lives, meaning that this crucified Jesus yet lives and has not been extinguished. He, this Jesus, is the first and the last, the beginning and the end, which is verse 17, end of verse 17. <clears throat> um, the one who died in the selfless cause of others was dead, but cannot stay dead. Well, what does it mean then? I don't have to die anymore. No, I, the selfless one will, has been raised and glorified by God, and I will continue to be selfless. And I could give you a bunch of examples, but that shall be saved for when I teach the book of Hebrews again. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. God wants him to reign. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. And it's, it's that section right there of what I just said that I fear I won't get to. The every knee shall bow and why and all of that that goes with that. But Lord willing, we'll see. If I just keep reading and stop talking. 
uh, it is the crucified one who is seen in the much fruit seeds who are after his kind. Meaning, if a seed falls into the ground and dies, it'll bring forth much fruit, many more seeds after his kind. So what is he trying to bring forth? Christians? No. If a seed brings forth after his kind, again, I'll say this again, and then I'm sure I'll suffer for it someday, and I've said it recently, is that, you know, Jesus didn't die as a Christian so that he could bring forth more Christians. But if a seed brings forth after his kind, then if he was a Christian, he would bring forth more Christians. We don't need more Christians. We need more of Christ in his body. God, help us. Oh, yeah, some of you know. I mean, I'm in the middle of, you know, <laughs> my experience of the conference, like two weeks before and still going on now, <clears throat> I don't know if I should even say this, but I'll just say it. I had more counseling, more dealing with situation, not conference thing, not our people, not the conference, but more stuff going on than all the conferences put together and still do. I'm still spending hours either on the phone or talking with people, da 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 da, you know. And yet, that's Jesus too. That's Jesus too also, just as much as anyone else's part because we're all one. We're all one in this. <clears throat> but what it, what it, what you say, well, what is your conclusion of all this counseling and all these troubles you've been dealing with? We need Jesus. That's my conclusion. We need Christ formed in us. We need to quit just being Christianized and be conformed to the image of Christ. Paul, dealing with the church's problems in Galatia, said... I travail in birth till Christ be formed in you. And a lot of people have, have Jesus, but they have an unformed Jesus. He's not formed in them. He's there, but he's not formed. And as long as it's murky and mystical or whatever, or just, you know, a the theological thought, Jesus is in me. Well, has, has he showed up? any lately? Well, not really, but I talked to the one on the throne a lot. What? Anybody see the connection there? You know, and that doesn't degrade at all, you know, Christ sitting at the right hand of God. That's, that's our assurance. That's who we're seated together in. But by being that dying seed, he wanted that seed in us. And that mind in us. See, he's equipped us. See, he's not, just that, he's not just telling us what to do and, you know, or even how to do it. He gave us the seed that can produce it. You know, and that's, that's hope. That's actually hope for the hopeless. If you believe it, you'll never quit. You'll never give up on Christ being formed in you. Whatever lack that you may have, he's still hope. There's hope. There's, you know, you can always say it like this. There's no hope for you, but Christ is your hope. See? And that's hard for people to believe who are doing quite well in their Christianity. All right. But how much is the father getting the son? How much is he getting that sweet savor of Christ? How much, or how much stench is he getting of flesh that's offering itself? And we go, oh, I know he likes this. And he's going, could you stop? You know. In fact, he wouldn't say, can you stop? The wording in the scriptures is, that is an abomination to me. And that's the truth, but that's hard to swallow. So I blame on myself, not Paul or Jesus, okay? <clears throat> All right. Uh, so the one who died in the selfless cause of others was dead, but cannot stay dead. But yet he's always self-giving. 
You see that? He gave himself in death. He gives himself in, in a million deaths. A million altars, could you say? Of selflessness. God wants him to reign. It is the crucified who is seen in the much fruit seeds who are after his kind, who demonstrate in their walk not glorious resurrection, but glorious self-giving. See, they're not walking around going, ah, yes, I am the, you know, I am the resurrected. He's the resurrection. I am the resurrected, you know. I mean, I love it. What Jesus, I was, look, I'm he, he that was dead. And yet I'm alive forevermore because of that nature. God will always raise it. He will always exalt it. We go, well, how, what assurance do I have? Absolutely none if you're basing it on you. <laughs> you know, so stop thinking that you're okay and start pursuing the Lord. He must increase. That's, I love those words from John. He must, he must increase. And I must decrease. I mean, I've seen people for years, even in, in this place, you know. Oh, I believe it. He must increase. I want, you know, what do you want, brother? What do you want prayer for? I want, I want a, Jesus to increase. I want there to be an increase of Christ. And usually I don't say anything unless it's like the 500th prayer that they've asked me to pray over him. And then I say, well, have you ever considered decreasing so he could increase? <laughs> you know? Well, I don't want it that much. <laughs> I want it as a thing, not as an actual <laughs> principle that would actually take some, something of me away. <clears throat> I mean, I, I even pictured the other day, <laughs> you know, somebody looking in the mirror and they go, Lord, why did you, you know, I mean, I, I've got nice hair and, you know, you've given me, you know, fairly good looks and this and that and, you know, but why, I, I wish my nose was a little different. Why did you give me this nose? And, and in their understanding, they hear God saying, well, you can't all be perfect meaning everything about you can't be perfect. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <You know? laughs> All right, let me make sure I'm, this is the last sentence and I just can't seem to get past it. No, I did finish it. Okay, this is going to take me a second to go to where we left off a long time ago, <clears throat> we did. And I'm going to skip one section called the Resurrection versus Exaltation. And I want to talk, this is the subtitle now, <clears throat> Examining the Concept of Glory. <clears throat> because you ask any Christian anywhere in almost any denomination, do you want to give God glory? Or do you want God to have glory? And they go, yeah, yeah, I'll go, no question about it. Okay. Well, do you know how to go about doing that? No, I really don't. But, you know, I, uh, I think that probably if I would witness or if I would make sure I'm in church every Sunday or if I read my Bible at least once every seven months or... You know, <laughs> you know, something like that, you know, or have devotions, you know, family devotions. There's nothing wrong with any of that. But God is going to receive glory by Christ. What is it? How does it say? It's in the end of Ephesians or somewhere. It says something like... To, May God receive glory in the church through Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. Man. That's, I mean, that could really get you. Then all of a sudden you realize, okay, God's looking for glory. You know, he's not just looking for glory in general then. 
Well, you know, just any, can you come up with any ideas? Can you see God saying that to us? You know, can you come up with any ideas of how you could give me glory? You know, no, he wouldn't say that. He would say, stop coming up with ideas about how you can give me glory <laughs> and give me glory by Christ through you, the church. <clears throat> All right. So, am I doing good on the reading? Not really. <laughs> but thank you, brother. Now let us examine the concept of glory in light of these passages in Philippians. Most look for the glory of God to appear at and after the resurrection. But Christ crucified, number one, he is the glory of God. But Christ crucified is where glory starts coming forth. And I've mentioned this before, but it never hurts to look in the Bible. John chapter 12. And we've already quoted John 12, 24. Maybe we should quote John 12, 23, the one right in front of it. <clears throat> All right, everybody got it? John 12, 23. And let's read it together. Ready? And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. All right. Are you saying this is it? This is the hour. This is the it. Now we've come to the time and the hour when I'm going to be glorified. Okay, what's the next verse say? <laughs> truly, truly, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a seed fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. So he's talking about the cross. And he's saying, this is the hour of glory that that this will be the time or the hour or the time period in which I give God glory. All right, he's talking about the cross. Um, <clears throat> uh, when see, when we say he's talking about the cross, <clears throat> we picture. Um, Really, the crucifixion, almost like a picture of the crucifixion, like a painting or something, where Jesus is on a cross, and he's got his head warm, and just trying to give it, you know, and he's bleeding, and, you know, we look at that, and, you know, we go, yes, he's given God so much glory. Folks, what the cross, what the whole thing relates to is not him just hanging there, like that. It is the fact that they beat him They in the trial. They mocked him. They said, you're lying. You're a deceiver. But he deceiveth the people. In other words, picture you giving God glory. You're put into a situation where people begin to accuse you and they begin to say you're a deceiver and they begin to say, you know, you're 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 claiming that you're something great. And he never, you know, they said, you, you're claiming you're the son of God. And he never walked around going, I'm the son of God. He said, God is my father. It's different. That's declaring, that's declaring somebody else. I'm the son of God is declaring yourself. I am the son of God. Well, who's that sound like? Could it be Satan? <laughs> you know? But he said, God is my father. He's given He's pointing away from himself to someone else. It's a spirit. It, it, you, you, it's, his wording is very careful. Now, it's not careful to him because he thinks this way, so his words come out that way. But it's very carefully chosen, very, very specific to this mind that works in him, where he's not out to declare himself. So when he's say he, when he's saying, now is the hour. Guess what the next hour holds for him? You know, in fact, 
the rest of this in the hour is not 24 hour period or 12 hours or any of that kind of stuff or <clears throat> 60 minutes or any of it. It is this time period of the cross he's talking about. And okay, so he's going, okay, now, and, and it's about to start. Even though your, your chapter's away from the crucifixion, this is like, I forget, what is it, Mallory? Six days starting at John 12, 24 from the crucifixion. It's not, it's, it's happening. And he's in it now. <clears throat> he is convinced of it. In fact, it's probably not even that far away because chapter 15, um, he starts talking about the vine and the branches. And if you check that out, I think that's after they left the upper room. So it's talking about, in other words, for sure, it is talking about this time period that he's about to go into where uh, Pilate, Pontius Pilate is saying to him, look, <clears throat> I'm trying to help you here. These people are vehement. They're angry. This is, they want to kill you. And, you know, you, you know, you need to speak up. But like a lamb led to a slaughter, he opened not his mouth. Like a sheep before his shearers is dumb, he opens not his mouth. And they're shearing him. They are uncovering him. They are exposing him, but not really him. I mean, I wish I could dig in my notes that the Lord was sharing with me today real quick and read something to you that he was sharing with me along this line. And it's about the scripture in 1 Corinthians 5, 21 that says, He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us. He was made to be sin. And, and what I was getting from the Holy Spirit was that always in this thing we go, well, Jesus, Jesus was made sin, meaning that as a substitute, sin was like put on him and you know like like a carrier like a burden bearer sin was put on him and he went to the cross and he dealt with it but it was more than that we made him sin we said you're a deceiver we put him on trial we and you know you say well no no we if you've done it to the least of these you've done it unto me that takes a big leap, right? No, it's not that big a leap. It's a, you know, if you treat Christ in somebody that way, I mean, we, we always go, well, that's, you know, <clears throat> anyway. But all of the rebellion and all of the criticism and all of the, the, the garbage that, that was them, they saw it in Jesus. And they made him that, but he wasn't that. But he who knew no sin was made that. And they said, you're this and you're horrible. Now they're looking at themselves. Do you understand that? They're literally seeing what's true in themselves. And they're saying, you're this way. Now, you know, it, we see it in ourselves and we justify. So it's not as horrible. But, oh, baby, we find somebody that, you know, we can, we can beat the fool out of for it, you know. And why? Because we feel just, we feel better, we feel more, you know, righteous or something. <clears throat> when in reality, in the case of Jesus, it's everything that they were. It's everything that they were. And we, in our eyes, we made him sin. And I remember the thought came to me as I jotted it down. It was today the Spirit of God was sharing with me. That Jesus is not a glorified trash man, meaning that he doesn't come to your house and pick up your garbage and dump it for you. But that's the way we view Jesus. We made him into our garbage. He became our garbage. He became sin. Do you understand? He was made that. He was made garbage. And then as the lamb, he went to the cross and bore the punishment of garbage. I hope you're following what I'm saying. 
faith. He bore all the punishment of garbage. You know, I mean, it was just running through my mind, all of these examples. I was thinking about the, the way that we, we say, well, Jesus is my advocate, you know, and, and uh, we see him, uh, we see us in a courtroom, you know, and we see that we don't know how to handle and we're under judgment and the judge is looking at us to condemn us for all of our stuff. And Jesus takes care of it, all of it, you know, and he, 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 you know, passes on this thing, this legal document to the father and the father goes, okay, you're, you're free, you know, but, but if you actually, you know, if you actually turned on the TV and you're watching a court thing, and all of a sudden, they're turning, this vile person that committed all these things, they're turning it, and they're blaming it all on your attorney. And they put him on the stand, and they say, you did this, and you did that, and all this, and they're all angry and everything, and he's just not saying anything. They're going, well, you know, you know, what is the phrase that silence proves your guilt or something like that? <laughs> no, it doesn't, not, not in God's kingdom. You know, no, and not to God. <clears throat> and this, and all this, and all of a sudden they, they say, guilty, you know, what does the, the jury say? We find him guilty. You know, you're sitting there and they're watching the, attor the attorney being blamed for everything this guy did and made sin like this guy. And then we'll take him out. We're ready to, we've got the, gas chamber ready right now or whatever. I, I'm, I, just, I just don't know that we always see the reality of the things that we embrace through doctrines. I don't know that we <clears throat> really comprehend Jesus not being my garbage man that came and picked up my garbage and dumped it and cast it in the sea of forgetfulness. I mean, you know, and that's true, but I mean, there's, there, there's that, that, that mindset that it doesn't really realize the full impact of what happened. He didn't come pick up our garbage. We made him our garbage. And then we sent him to the cross and pointed fingers and mocked and laughed and said, if you're the son of God, and he was the son of God, and you tell me, you tell me anybody that can be mocked and everything and yet have the power to come off of that cross and destroy everybody and doesn't do it, then you're calling garbage and doesn't say, hey, I'll show you who the real garbage is because we were the real garbage. And, and he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. That's, that's what God glorified. <laughs> God thinks that's beautiful. God glories over that. And it brings him glory to have that coming forth. And it, not just 2,000 years ago, but to him be glory in the church, world without end, through Christ. But even that, we go, well, through Christ. Okay, so Jesus is, Jesus is in me leading me to, you know, go do this good deed for the day. You see what I mean? We're gonna, so we're giving glory. But we have to see Lamb on the throne or we have to see the crucified was what God raised. The crucified is what God glorified. Oh my God, it's a, it's a completely different reality. And, it, and if you see, if, if you can see in the heart of God and in the eyes of God as you look into his face, as he looks at Jesus, not just as he is feeding the, the poor over here, because it doesn't mention that. Doesn't mention, doesn't mention feeding the 5,000 anywhere in the epistles after the resurrection. Doesn't mention any of those events other than at the transfiguration. 
And the word transfiguration, transfigure comes from the word metamorphosis. And the exact meaning of metamorphosis is to give outward demonstration of your inmost nature. Well, that's what a caterpillar, he's walking around going, I wish I was a butterfly. You are. You, you understand? I mean, you are. You're just not manifesting it yet. Stop going, I want to be a butterfly. You know, just say I'm a wingless butterfly right now. <laughs> 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 but I, you know, but I, and, and here's the prayer. Not God make me something, but God manifest what you put in me of your son out of me. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, if you'll crawl around in the dirt long enough, it'll happen. No, no, no. Well, you know, if, if caterpillars would just pray more, they'd be like butterflies. Or read their Bible more. They need to memorize all of the Gospels. I'm just making something up here. But, I mean, you know, I mean, that's what we want. Okay, well, then what? 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 How do I give outward expression to my inmost nature? Uh, buddy, you need to stop crawling around, stop trying, stop doing all this, and go wrap yourself up into a cocoon of death and enter into that death phase and you'll come out of that when you're no longer seen and you're no longer trying and you're no longer but you want the lord to come be manifested in you it's a form of death and darkness and loss but it's god's way there is no other way for a caterpillar to manifest that's called metamorphosis. But we see the caterpillar and the butterfly, and we go, well, yeah, it's just going to happen, man. I'll just, I'll just stay with the Lord another 20 years, and I'm sure stuff's going to, you know, I'm sure great things are going to happen. No, it's not. No. The cross is what the manifestation is. To God be glory in the church through Christ Jesus. That glory is the selfless one, this one that doesn't think it's a thing to be grasped after, to be equal. See, we go, well, well you know, I never, I don't think in my whole Christian life I ever thought that I need to be grasping after being equal with God. So that doesn't apply to me. Well, have you ever thought it? A thing to be grasped after to be equal with Mallory or Kelly or Deb or John or Mike or, you know? They're, they're laughing, but somebody has because I count, counseled them. And you can be assured that in my counseling, when they told me that, I laughed too. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, Doug's heard this story several different times, and some of you might have heard it a couple of times, but you know, we had a student this long, long time ago, but it's in the early stages of our thing. And it was this guy, and he came, and he would sit right on the front. He'd get as close to my teaching as he could, and he would just sit there. And he'd just go, oh, my God. You know, and I would teach him. He's, oh, and afterwards, he'd come up and go, oh, that's the most wonderful teaching I've ever heard in my life. And you're just such a wonderful man of God and everything. And I'm going, oh, brother. Anyway, <clears throat> so, you, you know, he was new, and, you, you want, you, and it takes time. You know what I mean? It takes time for the Lord to bring somebody around to go, look, you ain't it. But <clears throat> <clears throat> they got to get to know the real me. <clears throat> but anyway, so one, one time, finally, he came up, and he said, man, I tell you what, I... I, I'm just praying that I can be like you. That's what he said to me. And I said, are you kidding me? And he looked at me and I said, 
I am doing everything I know to do not to be like me. I want to be like Jesus. And you're trying to be like me. You're on the wrong path. And it was a few weeks later he left. Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> let me just let me just go ahead and summarize now and wrap this part up. <clears throat> and that is, you know, like the like the concept of of caterpillar to butterfly, where we may not see the cross as the true metamorphosis and the true thing that all of a sudden you're because you went through that, now you can manifest what you already are on the inside. And, and don't give me that, well, y'all may be, but I'm not. Every, if you're born again, you got Christ, that's who you are. Christ is your life, and you need to quit that whining, mamsy-pamsy, half-hearted, lukewarm, fence-riding Christianity. And you need to embrace, you need to embrace Christ as your life. You, that starts with faith, doesn't it? It starts with faith. And if you never get to faith, then, you know, then what do you got? But to see the, the change and to begin to comprehend, you know, in so many areas, like I said, I'm talking about the advocate, and yet we don't see that we, you know, you know, all of a sudden we've shifted the blame over to our advocate, and all the trial is going towards him, and he's being blamed for all of it. We're just going, well, you know, I got an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he just carried it all, and he just dumped my garbage for me. Yeah, well, if he dumped your garbage, then you were the garbage. But he didn't dump your garbage. He became that. And to comprehend the cross and to comprehend the nature that would have to do that and to comprehend the one that would be mocked and mistreated and have all power and yet not but remain on that cross and to comprehend that to bring glory to God is not all the glorious, you know, glorified ideas of being able to do these great things or be this great thing and this will bring glory to God. But Jesus says, now, this is the hour. I'm, I've been doing all sorts of great things. Once I reach this hour and go through this, all those that follow me, all these dying seeds that I'm talking about here, they're not going to bring up feeding the 5,000. They're not going to bring up opening the eyes of the blind man. It's, you don't find any of that in the epistles. You just find them talking about the cross. <laughs> you do, you know. And, of course, the resurrection. But that, the resurrection is the, is the glorifying and exaltation of the crucified. You don't really comprehend that. If you don't really see that, then you just have Christian concepts floating around. So there has to be a heart. There has to be a desire. Oh, my Jesus, I need to know you now. I don't need to know you someday. I need to set my course now. You know, we always go, well, it's too late. You know, some people say, well, I've wasted too much time. And da, 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 da. Just start right now. Just, you just say, I'm going after the Lord now. And glory to God. He'll just he jumps in there with you, just like it, you know, like you're brand new, you know, because you get a brand new beginning, amen? And he loves that. He loves the faith as a little child. But I've been at this for 20 years. Well, why don't you jump out of that and get the faith of a little child? So I'm with you, Lord. I just believe that you can give me a new beginning and you want to show me your heart and you want and Father, you want me to know the real reality of these things. And 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 me saying that, 
I'm not saying I know all of the real realities of these things. I'm saying I want to know them. I'm saying I am in the process of knowing some things. Thank God. And, but, it, but they were so good that I'm not stopping. And the more I see his mind compared to the Christian mind or the average mind or the natural mind or the carnal mind, because it's, it's contrasted with all of those. You do know that in Corinthians. You know, his mind is a contrast, not just to the natural mind, unsaved people. It is a contrast to the carnal mind. And the more I know his mind, the more I realize this is a contrast to the way so many people think. And, I, and you know, when it talks about being a fool for Christ, this is what it's talking about, that you're going to look foolish based on having his mind and declaring his things from his view. And they're going to go, well, you're an idiot. This is about the resurrection. This is about glory, baby. This is about conquerors. You know, and the lambs right there on the throne go, praise you. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, you did it. You big, mean, little slaughtered lamb. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's like, uh, we got all this. But you, you know, you start messing with people's resurrection concepts, and you start saying the cross is, well, that's just crazy. Well, it is crazy. I admit it. It's not even my idea. So he's crazy, and I just happen to want to be crazy with him. You know? I just want to know him. I really just want to know him. And I want to be around people that just want to know him. And I don't know of anything better in my heart and mind. I can't think of anything better, you know. Well, wouldn't you like to be a, you know? No. If you could be king of the whole world, ugh, I got enough problems. <laughs> I can't, I'm not even king of, in my life yet, okay? <laughs> I got no business trying to rule or whatever. I just need Christ the ruler the lamb ruler, the lamb ruler, right? The slain lamb ruler ruling through me, first in me, over me, and then through me. All right, well, I think maybe we should pray this time. <clears throat> Father, we do hunger and thirst after your son, and we thank you so much that your spirit speaks to each of us where we're at, not just based on, on the teacher's words, not even based on his understanding, but you've allowed the Holy Spirit, you've brought him here to where we live, and you've allowed him to touch us deeply in the things that are most important to you for that person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness, Holy Spirit, to always lift up Christ. So, Father, I just pray you'll continue to move and to minister life and make us vessels of life, the self-giving life. In Jesus' name, amen.